So if you observe this uh, deleting, what is delete method will do? Example is deleting any file, deleting photos from the account, deleting an account itself, deleting a Twitter account or Facebook account, anything you want to delete, you will call delete API method. Put method, anything you want to update the existing resource, you will use put method. Basically, it will update. Like updating address, changing the name, renaming files, all these are examples of the put method. So get method is basically uh, simply you're getting the information, like checking the news on the website, searching uh, anything on the web. So these are all examples for get method. Post method, so basically you want to create something, a new resource in the server, then you'll use a post method. Uploading the pictures, send a tweet, uh, submitting the forms, and all these are post method. So post is not really important. So these are get, post, put, delete. So those are the main important. See this, this is how you can give endpoint URLs. So method name is a post slash API slash inventory item. And for post method, always remember you have a request body. That means input, you're going to give input. That's a post method always. It will create the new resource based on the given input. Next, put method. Put method is basically your idea, you know, updating this item. So that is the put, put method. So if you write in this item ID, you're updating. So get method means it will get all the items. So in this inventory, all items it will fetch. Delete. So you can delete the particular item input ID. So it deactivates that ID. Post. You can basically create particular, you know, uh, ID, but this is wrong here. So basically it, it can be a delete, delete ID, something this is the delete removes a number of items from the stack is basically as a delete and um, you can create a add a new number to the stack so get is basically you can get the particular id information that's a get call then what is the difference between path parameters and query parameters. See here, can you see here? So these are the path parameters. This is all path parameters. So query parameters, I'll show you. Query parameters, how it will be. So query, you're querying. So that's a query parameters means. So let's see what is path parameters. So Path parameters and query parameters are both ways to pass data to your endpoint URL in the web APIs. But they are used in different uh, way, you no know, context. So path parameters are used to identify a specific resource. Like you see, you have so many items. In that you are specifying, okay, particular item ID you are giving. That means particular item you are referring. That's a path parameters. So they are used to identify a specific resource within a collection of resources. For example, in a RESTful API, you might use a path parameter to specify any queue identifier of a user, like this, users ID. So that means in this users list, so ID is the one of the one, where ID is the path parameter. 
where ID is the path parameter that represents the unique identification of particular user. So in the list of users, particular ID you are giving, that means particular user ID you are referring. That's called path parameters. So you will mention in the curly bracket the path parameter name. So here you can see input is another path parameter. So ID is a path parameter so here. What is query parameters? So query parameters are used to provide additional information or to filter the results of a collection. So resource collection you can filter. It's so like, you know, in the RESTful API, so you, may, you will use this query parameter to specify number of results to return. So like this question mark, you will use a question mark, like this slash users question mark limit 10. So list only 10 users. So that is the how you can use a query parameter. So that's how a query parameter will be. Question mark after whatever is it, that's a query parameter. The limit is a query parameter. Here the limit is there, right? that's a query parameter. The question mark, always remember question mark after whatever is, that's a query parameter. So example for path parameter is slash users ID returns details of specific user with a given ID. So slash post ID comments. It is comments for a specific post. Query parameters is slash users question mark limit 10. Returns a list of 10 users. Slash post question mark category news sort descending. So basically what is meant by this? This is the C and this question mark. These are the so indications for you. There are query parameters are so implemented on this endpoint URL. So returns a list of post store no sorted in the descending order by news. That's the query parameters means. So this is a very important interview question, this one, the difference between path parameters and query parameters. Please make sure you give a proper answer for this, right? Just give an examples also fine. If you are not able to explain theory part, just give an examples. At least remember these examples and give that. So then they can understand, okay, this guy knows what is query parameters, what is path parameters. So instead of saying, I don't know, and at least you give with examples and tell that. Basically query, you're querying, right? With this news, you're querying and you're sorting with a descending order. So that's the uh, query means. So another very important interview question, this one, don't miss this. Okay, so, what are the common API testing types? Any questions till now before going for this? Any questions? Silence. So most theory is a theory part. Generally, we won't get much, but at least few of them you will. So catch them, okay? Get to, post to, put to, delete, means what? And uh, so what is mean by path and query parameters? With some examples, at least I'm showing, right? Just remember them. While executing, I'll show you all, of, all those uh, methods one by one. Let's move on. So what are the common API testing types? As I already mentioned in the beginning, functional testing, performance testing, error detection testing, security testing, penetration, fuzz testing, interoperability testing. Mainly we will do functional testing, load testing, security testing. You tell these only, okay? So not necessarily all other. So these are the common uh, API testing types. So what must be checked when performing API testing? During the API testing process, so what you will check? So a request is raised to the API with a known data. So one is, you know, accuracy of data you will check. Schema validation you will do. HTTP status codes. So data type, 
validations, order and completeness, authorization checks, implementation of response timeout, error codes in case API returns, non-functional testing type like performance and security test. So these are all you will perform as part of API testing. So what are the major challenges while doing API testing? So parameter selection. Okay, what data I need to provide, what parameter data I need to provide, that's another challenging. Parameter combination, okay, which combination you need to provide, that's another challenge. Call sequence. So when, which API first need to call, which API later you need to call, that call sequence is another so challenge. So output verification and validation. So once you get the output, whether this is correct or wrong, so to get conclusion, it will take some you no know, uh, difficult uh, decision you have to take at that time. So another important challenge is uh, providing input values, which is very difficult. So as UA is not available, right? So that's why it is a big challenge thing while giving the input data. So what kind of bugs the API testing can find? So missing or duplicate functionality. Maybe functionality is missing, it's not there. And you'll get 404 status code. Fails to handle error conditions gracefully, but uh, you're missing some error conditions. So the developer didn't handle them. Then you can now uh, so raise a bug for that also. Stress, reliability, security, unused flags. So you are not using a true or false flags. And just such cases, you know, you can raise a bug also. So errors you didn't implement, you are, you know, you can find errors also, which is not implemented by the development team. Inconsistent error handling, performance, and uh, multi-threading issues, improper errors. So all these are uh, so bugs you can find through API testing. So what is API documentation? Okay, so developer is developing the APIs, right? So that APIs, they will mention somewhere. So they will mention these APIs. So there's the APIs somewhere they will write. That place is called the API documentation. So where you will get a complete information about the API. So what is the structure? What is the HTTP word method and the schema structure? And what is the input output? All this will be mentioned in the API documentation. So that's a API document. What are the different API documentations are available? Swagger, one of the famous one. Mir dot, slate, flat doc, API blueprint, rest doc. So these are all the different uh, no, uh, API documentation, but this is the famous Swagger one, a uh, Swagger document. So here, all the APIs, they will list out here. So that you can go and see each API, so what is the method? What is the endpoint URL? What is the, so the headers you need to give? What is the uh, authorization token you need to provide? So all will be mentioned very clearly. And what is the output you will get? What is the status code you will get? Everything will be detailedly written in this document, API documentation. Okay, so that's all about uh, this uh, theoretical part. Uh, you can download the uh, Postman, so everybody can start downloading this, and uh, I'll I'll show you tomorrow how how to use the Postman. Okay, so can you all so download this if you have a uh, so Windows, just click on Windows sixty four bit.
Okay, so please download download sixty four uh, bit for Windows. If you have a MacBook, uh, you have here option Mac. Okay, Linux and Mac. So you can download that. Here is the Mac. You can download it. So once you download, you can. So it's a just an easy one. Okay, simple. You can download. Click on this. It will be downloaded. So then you can just go here and you can see in the downloads. See this is the one. So just open this, it will open directly. Postman will open. So this is the postman. So this is the postman. So you'll get a postman like this. So you have to you know. So register. So first time when you are opening, you have to register. I have already uh, account. So I logged in with my account. You can now. So sign up. We can sign up and uh, tomorrow I'll explain this entire, you uh, know, so you can even, you know, shortcut this to your uh, here. So this is the postman. You can open, so whenever you close also, you can open that. So if you close also, you can open this. A straight download. Okay, so download and just double click on that icon. It will be our exe file. Basically, it's a exe file. You can download this and launch this. So you have a collections, environments, history. So workspace, you can create a different workspaces. So I'll show you tomorrow all these. Uh, so how to use this and uh, before going for that, I'll explain uh, first uh, status codes and JSON format. So then we'll execute in, uh, some of the APIs, okay? Any questions?